social work comes in a lot of forms. Being a social worker, it is such a, it takes you to heal your trauma, not that damn medication. Here and day that you were diagnosed with your mental health. You are wondering if you have what it takes to be a social worker. This vlog, baby, this vlog is for you. So let's get into a day in the life of a social worker. Stop playing with them, right? I bet he gonna get what she like. So what's your sign? Cause I like you. Social work comes in a lot of forms. There are a lot of different occupations and job titles that you can have under social work. But this job that I just recently started is a social worker part two. So basically I'm a social worker for the state and I work for the state of Delaware. The amazing thing about this job, I can pick my own schedule, girl. Now every job that I've done under social work, you know, I have not been this blessed, but for this particular job, I can pick my own schedule. So for example, I can come in from eight to four. I can come in from nine to five. I choose when I choose when I want to go in and I choose when I want to go visit my clients that's what type of occupation that this is and I am so freaking excited that I can do that so today we have a busy day I have four clients scheduled for recertifications but for this particular job we have to recertify our clients once a year and when we do that we go to the house we ask them a list of questions have them sign paperwork boom by the bam 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 and it's done now that doesn't take me a while it depends on how talkative the client is. Sometimes you might have clients who will shut the door in your face, cuss you out, and get ignorant with you. It all depends how the clients are feeling, because don't forget, we are working with clients who have substance abuse problems and mental health problems. That is one thing I forgot to include. For this program, like some programs I was, when I was a substance abuse counselor, I was working with people who had primarily substance abuse problems, you know, like alcohol problems and stuff like that. So now I'm a social worker who works for the state. I'm working with people who have mental health problems and all also substance abuse problems so it all depends they have social worker jobs what are they doing really like look at this like I can't make this up look at this look at this like why why would you do that why would you think that that's okay listen listen y'all city people different and I really mean that in the most humblest disrespectful way like some of y'all are different look at this Okay, okay. There are some social work jobs where like, if you have a love for children and you wanna help children get out of their bad situations, they have jobs where you can actually, you know, go into children's home. If there's abuse being accorded, you will go in there and inspect the home, and inspect if the, if the child is going through abuse and things of that nature. So there are all types of work in social work, which is good. It's a very, very broad field. But also remember, if you wanna get wealthy, there's not a lot of money in it, unless you go and get your master's, which I am kind of in the process of doing now. Girl, it's a lot. And rising, as you see, these people are driving crazy. These people are driving crazy. As I was saying, Grand Rising, happy Tuesday. I hope and pray you have a blessed day and we're gonna get into this schedule. Currently in the work car, 
today I have a Ford. They have like the um, Elantras. I forgot this, the Sonatas, Elantras. But those were taken up this morning. So basically, when you get there, if you want a good car, you gotta sign a good car out before everybody gets one, baby. The thing I don't like about these cars, girl, is that like when I plug my phone up, I can't see like the directions on the screen. So I have to hold my phone or put it somewhere to where I can hold it. They don't have like no car mounts in here. So we are on our way. We are on our way to our first client. Now, for this client, I'm gonna do a recertification. Recertifications happen once a year. You know, once we get him recertified for another year of services, he'll be good for a whole year. The good part about, you know, having this type of job is so much flexibility. When I say I make my schedule like during periods to where I'm like in between clients, I can do things for myself if all my work is done. That is the great thing about this job, baby. Flexibility, girl, okay? Can you say it with me? Flexibility. So if you're looking for a career or a job to where you can be flexible and where it's not like your supervisor is all over your back worrying about what you do, this job is for you. So my supervisor, of course, I check into her and stuff like that. And of course, you know, she makes sure that her workers do their work. But she's not like on your back, if you get what I'm saying. Like she's really not on your back. When you get in the car, you have to sign in um, the mileage, where you're going, and like what time that you're taking the car out. So that's pretty much it. And on these cars, of course, they have like a speed thermometer thing. So they try to access not to speed. Also, we can't leave the car running. So if I'm sitting somewhere like editing in between my clients or reading a book or something, I just turn the car off and roll the windows down. Now, of course, when summertime come, baby, we might have some issues there. But right now is May, so transitioning from fall to spring. I mean, from winter to spring. So, you know, I don't really have no problems. So far, most of the clients have been nice. We're working in the mental health field. So, it really depends on the attitude or the mood that your client is in that day. You may have all good clients one day. You know, you may be like, oh, okay, this job is easy breezy. The next day, you may have clients shoving the door in your face and threatening you and stuff like that. It all really depends on your clients and their moods. Now, as a social worker, sometimes it can get difficult, you know, because we have lives, we deal with our personal lives and issues and things of that nature, but you have to try to remember, keep work life, <laughs> social life, your personal life, and work life separate. That would be my best advice for this job. And just always remember that you're doing this to serve people, you're doing this to help people. I have a humble, humble heart for just humanity I always been like that ever since I was younger and if you don't have a humble heart for people want to help people this is not the field for you like this field does not pay a lot it's not like the least amount of pay but it's not the most neither so if you want to get in this field to try to make money and get rich baby this social work is not the field for you okay but if you have a humble heart you want to help people you want to make a difference you want to have a job that feels rewarding and you want to interact with people this job is for you baby I look at my clients like I look at my family to be honest with you like if I have an older client and it's a woman I look at her like she's my mom because like we're all connected God has love for all his people if you're religious or spiritual at all you know God said treat your neighbor as you treat yourself so that's what I try to do I have a client at 10 o'clock it's 9 38 I'm supposed to be getting there at 9 43 but normally I try to get there. Sorry for the shakiness, y'all. I don't have a mount in a work car, of course. I try to get to my client's house five to ten minutes early so I can just relax, you know, get my paperwork together. You know, if I'm nervous or whatever. Because some days I'm like, oh my God, I'm meeting new people. Like, it's nervous. I'm, I'm nervous, just like any human being would be. But other days I'm like, oh my God, I'm excited to meet new people, just to speak life into people. Because a lot of times when you go see these clients, they're going through things. They're going through their darkest times. Like, my one client... My second week of working, me and him really had like a therapy session for like an hour, y'all. Like when I say I felt like I was his therapist, I felt like I was his therapist. As I was talking to him, I was just praying and, you know, asking God to give me what to say. Like speaking to me to um, speak to this young man because we deal with clients who are suicidal. And you may be the last person that can help and save them, not to put pressure on yourself. But, you know, I just try to look at this work like that. Like, these are my good graces that I be doing, okay? And I just get paid for it. So, if you ask me, that is what social work is. Girl, I went to the wrong house. And that happens. <laughs> That happens sometimes. The client lives about one minute from where I am right now. So let's see. And you know, that's another thing with this. It's a lot of driving in this field. It's a lot of stopping and going. Also, sometimes like you might be in like rural areas. 
like areas with violence and stuff like that that doesn't bother me because the way i grew up i grew up around you know kind of like a little poverty and i have brothers who was in the streets so stuff like that don't bother me but if you're not used to that that could be a challenge you know if you work in like a, a city or a rural area but of course it depends on where you're working girl if you're working and not the city you might be okay but if you're working in the city it can get sorry for the bumpy sorry it can get real real treacherous baby if you're working in the city i might have to park i might have to park Hold on, my... so now i'm at the right place Let's try this again. All right, my battery's about to die, eh, but I brought my charger. I believe so, yes. Do you have a rent payee? Like, does someone take care of your finances? Or, all right, do you have any past trauma in your life? Do you smoke cigarettes or do you vape? Have you ever served in the military? And what type of health insurance do you have? Do you remember the date and year that you was diagnosed with mental health? Do you remember how old you were or like around what time uh. in your life? All right, so that was pretty good. It went pretty well that went great um i did not go into the client's house he had me sit outside of his house like in the stairwell and sometimes you'll be doing these recertifications on the road wherever you can find your clients at that's when you got to get them done and it went pretty well he was nice um i had to ask for his mother's contact he was like why are you asking my mom's contact and i just i had to reassure him we will not be calling your mother it's just to have it on file god forbid something happens to you or we need to contact that only took 14 13 14 minutes it is 10 15 so now my next client ain't till 11. So as I said, if I have other people to call, I would take this time. I would bring all my stuff on the road with me. And I would take this time to call my other clients to try to set more stuff up. However, I do have one client that I need to call. And I just got her number. If I can do her recertification to Zay, baby, that would be perfect. So let me call her while I'm in the car. So what I do is, like, I like to be out in the community all day, get as much people seen as I can, get as much business done as I can. Then I like to sit in the office and do my paperwork all at once, baby. I don't want to be in the field, no, 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 and then in the office now. I like to do all the things while I'm out, get it all done, while I got the stamina and the momentum and the energy. Then I like to go and then complete my work on the days while I'm in the office. But the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. All right, now, if she did have a voicemail that was set up, of course, I will leave a voicemail just saying, hey, it's Tisha from... It is time for us to get you recertified for another year of services. I need some signatures and also to answer some questions. I need a signature and also to ask some questions face to face. Please let me know when you're available and call me back at this number. Something simple like that, girl. Now, I still have to get used to like talking in the office on the phone because y'all, it be dead silent in our office most of the times because people be in and out. Like I said, everybody makes their own schedule. So it just be a lot doing that, like talking in the office, hearing yourself and everybody quiet. But I'm getting used to it, girl. I'm getting used to it. client's house right but it was on the left so i had to go all the way around all these different blocks to come back to freaking park on the right bruh a day in the life of a social worker in the city all right girl so we have just arrived to the client's house now this client i came here last thursday no i'm came here last friday right i came here last friday because me and him had scheduled that time to go then however i pull up to his house no one's answering i call his phone text him three or four times nobody answers and that's gonna happen sometimes sometimes you're gonna schedule stuff with people and you're gonna pull up to their house and they don't answer or they call or they answer the phone say they're not home or they're just not in the mood that's just a part of working with people with mental health and substance abuse you know their moves be up and down so i'm about to put his paperwork in here mr yeah put his paperwork in here mr dd and grab a pen together work phone pen i always take my personal phone in the houses with me because you never know 
Um, of course, I have a feeling that God's going to protect me. God, you know, I'm I'm doing this work to help people, not really take nothing away from people. I'm living a crazy, crazy world. So I have my location services on on my phone. And protect yourself, okay? You can never be too prepared, baby. Okay? Period. He is something else, okay? Hello. Hi, this is Tisha from Promise. I'm outside. Okay, you wanna? Uh, I'll meet you uh, uh, um, downstairs. Uh oh, we in luck, y'all. He answered. BRB. All right, so we are done. Now that one took me about thirty minutes, cause right now it's eleven twenty-seven. So we are done with another recertification. And I also forgot to mention, like in my office, they put recertifications on the top priority list because you know, that's how we get paid and that's how we can recertify our clients for another year of services. So I'm happy, y'all. I've been busting out my recertifications. I've been trying to get them done early. They're due a month before, you know, they expire. Client was a gentleman, as I was saying, and he was really, really nice. Now he had a roommate there. And when I talk to people, I don't know what like type of effect I have, y'all. Hold on, I'm going up a hill. Lang, lang, lang. On something hanging from the bottom of their Tesla. I was saying, when I talk to people, I don't know what type of effect I have, but I always have people get emotional and cry and just let it out. That's my goal. Like, that's what I want to do. You know, not saying, like, oh my God, I want somebody to be sad. No, but I feel like when people get in tune with their emotions, that's them really talking about what they need to be talking about, getting it out. Because a lot of these people don't have nobody to talk to. They either don't have money for counseling or their insurance doesn't cover counseling or they just don't have the means to really be disciplined and go. Every time when I really go to visit people, my goal is to have them feeling a little bit better than before I walked in the door. Or have them really sit back and face their trauma, face face why they're sad, face what they're going through because that's the only way to healing. I know how rough it can be. Look at, look, look at what's going on. Sorry, I know everything's a little shaky right now. Well, excuse you, sir. My goal is to break walls down in counseling and motivational talk and just being positive and facing trauma it's hard okay so what i'm trying to say is every time i meet a client nine times out of ten this is their first time seeing my face and working with people who have trauma being a person who has trauma sometimes it's hard to open up to somebody that you just met so with me being able to get people to really open up to me and be comfortable in doing so i know that that's a gift because that's not easy to do especially who are in urban areas who are in the city so what i was saying is like having people open up to you and be vulnerable with you when they done been through so much hell and trauma it's a blessing to be able to do that and of course like it takes me to be comfortable with seeing people emotional seeing people sad seeing people depressed it, it takes me to be comfortable with doing that in order for me to really get the results that I want and like I said the results that I want is to have people feeling much better or having people feel like a side of relief or just a weight has been lifted off their shoulders after I leave their house that's the goal well, I'm the type of person who always goes through silent cries and I'm the type of person who be wishing somebody would talk to me ask me questions and care so you know when i'm doing this job i'm not just in there oh what's this what's that what's this what's that and and getting out the door no i really care about these people and i want them to feel that when i speak to them when i talk to them and when i interact with them i want them to know that things are going to get better i want them to know that you don't have to rely on medication to heal your trauma because it takes you to heal your trauma not that damn medication i want them to know that better days can come if you want them to so that's kind of my goal so speaking to my one client that i just left he was getting emotional he shared with me that he was raped for four years when he was in foster home you know foster care and he was like, i don't want to cry and i was like listen crying is a sign of healing so no matter what no matter where you gotta go no matter what you gotta do cry and let it out because you will feel so much better afterwards i promise oh my goodness like this is the second client who has done this i have met these people for the first time and just speaking to them asking them questions has made them be vulnerable and be soft and these are men we're talking about about men who live in the city so i just know i have a gift for that and you have a gift too it's in you if you're watching this being a social worker it is such a rewarding job like i said it has its days like every other job okay it has its days like every other job but it's very rewarding i promise you it's very rewarding it's 11 33 and my next client is not until one o'clock and what i think i'm about to do is because my lunch is at the office now normally if i was out all day i would just buy food out but today we're not doing that baby because I brought food out the other day and it was $20, okay? We gotta save our coins. My daughter's birthday is in two weeks. First, I'm gonna eat my lunch, I'm gonna bring you guys with me, and then we're gonna have somebody at one o'clock. You say you only want to 
wanna be best friends I just wanna be a damn girlfriend What I gotta do to make you face the truth You didn't act like a friend that night Maybe that's why it felt so right Do I really need to spell it out for you? And I only have a certain amount of time to get to my other client. He's at one o'clock. We're in the Hyundai car because one was available. So like I told you, I'd rather have these cars and the other ones because I can actually plug my phone into the car and look at it that way. I hate holding the phone and having to drive. Like the work phone, girl. Where did I put the work phone? But yeah, girl, it's raining outside. It's been gloomy all day. It has been a sunny day today. This client is 18 minutes away. Oh, this crap back in my bag. Lunch was good, girl. I had me salmon, sweet potatoes, and Brussels sprouts, okay? Because we are trying to do better. Trying to do better. This is my last client of the day. Man, I like this car because, baby, the backup camera is, is, is amazing. The backup camera is amazing, girl. Like, come on now. You don't like driving, this might not be for you. It requires like half in the office, half on the community, which is what I like, cause I don't wanna be behind no desk all day, every day, looking at the screen. That's just me personally. Some people prefer that, but not your girl. So girly, right now I am booking, I am paying the deposit fee, cause I am throwing my friend a surprise pole dancing party, girl. Ah! I'm so excited. So if you're interested in those type of spicy kinky things, hit the subscribe button and push your bell notification on and be notified when that video is coming out because you know it's going to be one for the books, baby. Okay? talking bird in such a long time <laughs> i authorized the division to share all of my information as far as like your discharge history medical history and stuff these are your initials right here saying that the services that you have you put your initials right here this is the last one signature in today's date which is 5 9 2023 okay. Oh, you're fine. Do you have any trauma from your past? Or do you remember um, the year and date that you were diagnosed with your mental health? All right, do you remember the date of, of your last dentist appointment? Last time you went to the doctor, do you remember? Have you 
go remember. Now, does your family have any history of substance abuse or mental health? Is that does that run in your family? All right, so who raised you? All right, so do you identify with a certain religious group? Are you Christian? Are you Muslim? Do you have a living will? Do you have any speech, hearing, or vision problems? Do you have any access to any weapons? Have you been hospitalized within the last year for your mental health? Oh, right, all oh, right, all oh, right, all oh, right. He was a sweetheart. Um, he was a sweetheart. He was a really, really good sweetheart. And he was quick. That only took me 10, 15 minutes, girl. Boom, boom, bada, bam, bam, bam. And we're done. So as I said, I'm about to try to see if I can schedule one more climb before the end of the day. My work day ends at 4 o'clock. It is now 1.12. So if I can't schedule a work client, I'm going to head back to the office to complete all this paperwork that we have done, which is not a long process. A recertification for me to put it in the system, it might take me like a half an hour, 20 minutes. It depends. It, it doesn't take long. Maybe an hour if it's a lot of information. Like for this client right here, it wasn't a lot of information. I think he had speech problems and like as far as like comprehending, you know, so he didn't give me a lot of information. So it's not going to take a long time for me to do that, girl. Let's head back to the office. Say now it's time with Rosalyn. Say hi. Ah, stick your tongue out. Huh? And be careful, honey. Be careful, baby. Oh, Nyla. Nyla. Not nice. Be nice to mommy. Look at them teethies, girl. They is coming in, mama. So I am home now. I didn't. You know record on the way home i just want to have some time to myself i was supposed to be going to this girl for her to I fix these lashes because like after the day that she did them girl they was falling out and i was like i didn't got my lashes done before the girl that did my lashes in february she did such a good job the lashes were quality the glue whatever she used was quality okay the girl i went to this time was trash and i was like you know what i deserve better than that and i had her to pay her a hundred dollars so you know i wasn't happy about that i might try to see if i can get my money back anyway i had a beautiful day today i had a beautiful productive day it was nice outside so normally when i get home i spend about an hour or two with Rosalind. girl like I i'm not making this up did, did you did, do you see that like <laughs> I'm gonna try to start waking up at 5.30 to go to the gym again because girl, we gotta get this baby weight off of us, okay? I like to work out early in the morning because there's not as many people so I can get in and get out. Checking in with y'all. I'm gonna spend some quality time with her. Yeah. And I will check back in when it's time for her bath time. I ate one of her little snacks, but I'm starving. Like that little healthy meal I ate earlier, girl. Come here, mm -hmm. it is okay. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you hit Hi to the people, say hi. Sorry for the dim light, it's 9.36. This is a day in the life of a social worker, AKA first time mom. Oh my gosh, like they were saying that one year olds go through like sleep regression when they get around like 12, 10, 11, 12 months and that's what she's going through, I think. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. She was supposed to been sleep. You know, I literally almost had a breakdown. Like I was tearing up, crying up, just being a mom is a lot of work and it's overwhelming, especially, you know, when you only have primary help from one side of the family. But hopefully she'll go to sleep. And I'll tell you, I'm exhausted. I am so exhausted and beyond exhausted. It's overwhelmed. I just want her to go to bed. I just don't know where my camera is. <sighs> I just wanted to relax. I'm gonna try to feed her like a little snack before dinner. Hopefully this is good night. I'm gonna try to get her a bottle. I need to find my camera. Where is my camera? Hopefully this is good night.